years ago, but here we are. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Charlie, for that kind introduction. And uh, I want to say what a joy it is to be here today. I've known Marie and April for many years. I knew April first. Both we are both students at Episcopal Divinity School in Cambridge, and came to know Marie as she came to EBS. Also was at ecumenical events through the Religious Institute, and then in her exploration of MCC and falling in love with April. I presided over her ordination, and uh, Marie watched you grow in your ministry. I watched you take on service to MCC Global on the governing board this summer, and then discern your call to pastoring here at MCC of the Palm Beaches. I'm so excited for all of you today and delighted to be present for yet another occasion in Marie's life and in the life of this church. And April, who could have imagined that we'd be here? <laughs> Amen. I bring you greetings from Sun Coast Metropolitan Community Church. They send their love. And from Reverend Vicki Miller, my colleague and co-pastor. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. God, our strength and our redeemer. The letter to the Ephesians is more a homily than a letter circulated to those early churches, only a few of which were maybe even close to being as old as this church. So you figure all the churches that get addressed in the New Testament were younger than you now. Amen. That's, that's amazing to think. It was meant for an emerging revolutionary community struggling to find unity in diversity embodying Christ in its congregational life and exercising spiritual maturity in times that were hostile to a gospel of love and justice and inclusion. It's full of poetic language, speaking the truth in love. Ephesians has MCC written all over it. That's how I feel. And here you are, here we are, MCC of the Palm Beaches, Pastor Marie, in the times we live in, Amen. In the shadow, dare I say it, of Mar-a-Lago, right here you are. <laughs> in um, and a in a, a, a country where we see increase of corruption in ways maybe we hadn't imagined, and as we struggle to be the Church of Jesus Christ in this hour. Today, as you see the Palm Beaches, you're, I guess you're about 38 years old, and you bring your story of building community, of being a witness for justice, for love and peace. All that has shaped you for decades, all those who have led you, who have passed through these doors, who believed in your love and mission, you bring into this relationship with a new pastor, all of that. And that new pastor will help you change again and call forth new gifts from you. And Marie, you bring your story, your journey of faith and coming out and theological shifts and education, creating a family, taking risks to come into MCC ministry, to be a public queer person of faith, to be on MCC's governing board, and now to make this your home, to enter into a new complex story of faith and challenge here in this community that makes a difference in people's lives. We have a saying that everything rises and falls on leadership. The kind of leadership that has integrity, is faithful, is open to God's voice, and is mutual. Ephesians does say a pastor's role is not to do everything herself, but to equip the church for service and build up the body of Christ. I also believe that kind of leadership has to be dispersed in the body. It's not about one person. It's not just Marie that will come and equip, train, and build you up. You also need to be equipping her and each other. You need to be building each other up, building her up for the days, weeks, months, and years ahead. You can teach her more about how to be a good pastor. Marie, you can teach them how to stay true to their values while being willing to ask questions such as, who needs us now? The author of Ephesians has an understanding that it takes many gifts to embody Christ and to grow the church. 
He says, some are apostles. To be an apostle is to be sent. I really felt like Suncoast MCC today sent me here to you. They were so proud to send one of their pastors. I had to leave a congregational meeting a little bit early to get here. They excused me with joy because they believe that sending out and sending forth their love and encouragement is part of what it means to be part of MCC. And Marie has been sent to you by the Holy Spirit for reasons we cannot yet even begin to know. And you, MCC of the Palm Beaches, you were sent to her to stretch her, to call forth new gifts. Together you are sent into a community hungry for authenticity, for a gospel that is real and that is healing. Ephesians also say some are prophets. This church has been a prophet in this community on the front lines, building interfaith connections in a context that is often hostile, speaking out for LGBTQ justice, justice for all people, speaking out against white supremacy, speaking up for immigrants. Marie, you bring your own battle scars and struggles of being a warrior for justice, especially in the context of sexuality and spirituality. Ephesians says we also have the gift of being evangelists, sharing the good news. For so many, the church has been bad news. Denominations still can't get it together to welcome all, and there are so-called evangelists who make careers out of hate mongering. I am betting that Marie brings some new skills and tools to you to sharpen your public message and your public profile in a community that needs churches that preach and embody a radical love, a radical gospel of Jesus. <coughs> and it says that some are pastors, shepherds of souls. Right away, some of you will invite Marie to be your pastor. But my experience is that others will hold back. They will wait and see. They will be shy. Some will test you. Are you for real? <coughs> All of that is natural and normal. And Marie, you cannot be the only pastor here. In my years of pastoring, some of the best pastors have been mature lay leaders or other clergy who are gifted in this way allowing others to pray for me, accepting care from them is so important. It reminds us all that you are human. As brilliant and amazing and wonderful as you are, you are human, and that makes you even more wonderful. You know, sometimes pastoring is a lonely vocation, but it is made less lonely if we invite mutuality, keep good boundaries, but never see ourselves as the only go-to person. My experience of you is that you are a person who nurtures friendships that nourish you. Don't let pastoring isolate you. <laughs> Make new friends and keep the old, as we say. Also, Ephesians says, we are to be teachers. We teach in many ways, often by our example. Marie, you are a brilliant person with so much to impart. And it's also important to nurture a cadre. There are all kinds of teachers in this church. Always have been <laughs> and will be. Can help equip the saints in this church. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, you are all of these, all of you are all of these. Gifts given to leaders, to the church, to equip the saints for the work of service to the greater community. To the church today, I say, let Marie be Marie. She is not any of the pastors you have had before. She is unique, with unique gifts, 
She's a person of energy, strength, kindness, joy, and complexity. I will also say that Marie is kind of out there. <laughs> she is very honest and open and joyful and authentic in that. Learn from her. Notice how she may be different from folks who have pastored you in the past. Be prepared for some surprises, some that make you nervous, some that bring you great joy. Get to know her and let her know you. She will make mistakes. She will impress you. She may confuse you sometimes. <laughs> and she will certainly delight you. Let her take you places you're a little scared to go. Let Marie be Marie. And Marie, love this church for now just as it is. Even with all the ideas and thoughts and fancies you have about what this church might here become, you have to start by loving right where we are <laughs> and then getting to know them as you have found them in all their beauty and messiness, in all the complexity that they are. Learn from their stories and question the narrative they present to you. I think this is the most important thing I might say to you today. Every church has its narrative. Who we are, who we've been, what we've been about. And one of the best things about inviting a new pastor is that they can question your narrative. Is this really who we are and who we mean to be forever? Or is there something different or more? Or is there another way to look at our story and our narrative? Question assumptions and limits. Who have they been? Who can you become together with the Spirit's power and guidance? Another thing, every church that hires a new pastor says that they are doing this and they are wide open to change. <laughs> I want to say that when we say that, we really mean it, but it's not really very true. <laughs> it's partially true. And so I would invite you to understand the resistance. What is the resistance to some change? In that resistance, you will find keys to what is next. You also need to be prepared for all kinds of surprises, many of them very delightful and unexpected. Years ago, I moved to Sarasota, Florida from Los Angeles to pastor Church of the Trinity MCC. And people there asked me for years, why did you come to Sarasota? Why Sarasota? And I remember being very struck by that question, which is, seems like a mundane question. You know, I came here for a job, I came here to pastor a church, whatever. And what I found myself often saying was, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. More will be revealed. That is part of the excitement of a service like today. We don't really know <laughs> why you have come to this place. Uh, but uh, I had a friend who used to say, we are here not by accident, but by divine appointment of some kind. And so trusting in that, we know more will be revealed. I found over time that I came for some individuals. I came for some people who never imagined they had a calling and they found it. I came to meet people outside of the church, but who got very drawn in some way. I came for friendships and came to be part of something happening in the community, and more and more. Today you're at a threshold. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. Will you open to me, Jesus says, to each other, to a new era? Marie, are you willing to be on a journey to find out why you came here? And MCC of the Palm Beaches, are you willing to find out why you called this woman to be your pastor at this time? Your answer today will make all the difference. 
May God bless you and keep you on this amazing